I want to summon your senses and invite your intellect to the book of Acts. Chapter number 28. Acts chapter 28. And it is there that the Holy Spirit has highlighted for us this context of Scripture beginning with verse number 1. Verse 1 says, And when they were escaped, then they knew that the island was called Melita. And the barbarous people showed us no little kindness, for they kindled a fire and received us, every one, because of the present rain and because of the cold. And when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, there came a viper out of the heat and fastened on his hand. And when the barbarians saw venomous beasts hang on his hand they said among themselves no doubt this man is a murderer whom though he has escaped the sea yet vengeance does not suffer him to live and he shook off the beast into the fire and felt no harm Howbeit they looked when he had swollen or fallen down dead suddenly but after they had looked a great while and saw no harm come to him, they changed their minds and said that he was a god. In the same quarters were possessions of the chief man in the island, whose name was Publius, who received us and lodged us three days courteously. And it came to pass that the father of Publius lay sick of a fever and of a bloody flux, to whom Paul entered in and prayed and laid his hands on him and and healed him. I want to tag this text Surviving Snake Bites. May be seated in the Lord's Church. We've shared this theological resolve, ladies and gentlemen, that if it is the goal of all of us to live for Jesus and to actually be Christians, then it is the resolve that we cannot deny that living for Christ means ultimately to live Christ-like. We've been very clear that the ultimate goal of Christianity is to manifest the life of Christ in every believer while living in time. And since that is the case, then we have to also accept that if we're going to live for Christ and if we're going to live like Christ, then God reserves the right to subject our lives at any given moment to suffer for the advantage of other people. The ultimate goal of Christ, his ultimate mission was to suffer for the advancement of other people. He gave his life that you and I may be restored and reconciled into a righteous relationship with God the Father. So, if we resolve that the ultimate mission and discipline of Christianity is to manifest the life of Christ in us, it also means that at any given time, God may call for your life not to just succeed, but he may call for your life to suffer 
for the sacrifice of other people. Unfortunately, this is an aspect of Christianity that most saints don't want to embrace because we want to manipulate Jesus for our own advantage. We want to use Christianity for our benefit, for our healing, for our blessings, for our miracle. But the reality of the matter is a Christian conviction and a Christian lifestyle encompasses sacrificing one's self for the benefit of other people. Paul told his pupil Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 12 that if we suffer we shall reign with him. He comes back in chapter 3 verse 12 of 2 Timothy chapter, chapter 3 and tells us that all who will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. And this is an aspect of the Christian walk that many of us don't want to uh, acknowledge. But God at any given right and at any given time reserves the authority to use your life in a way that you are suffering but somebody else is benefiting from your suffering. And the good news is, is that when he chooses to use your life sacrificially for the benefit of somebody else, here's the other thing we discover that after that sacrifice, he'll raise you back up, give you new life, give you purpose, and give you identity. Such is the discipline discovered in the discourse of Acts chapter 28. This is the closing chapter of the book of Acts, the first 30 years of this infant community called Christians. The first 30 years of the church after the outpouring of the Holy Ghost to establish Paul's ministry. This is this work, this entire book is manifesting off of the theme and thesis that is documented in Acts chapter 1 verse 8 where uh, it is clear that the Holy Ghost would be given to us to make us witnesses in Judea in Samaria and in the uttermost parts of the world. Acts chapter 28 culminates 30 years of that thesis coming into manifestation. Paul has planted many churches by the time we get to Acts chapter 28. As a matter of fact, uh, he has been arrested for the work of Christ. You and I don't understand fully what that means, but ladies and gentlemen, when you really walk into your call, there are some who will view your call as a crime. There are some who will not embrace your call and conviction. There are some who will view you as doing something bad when you're actually doing something good. This is the antithesis of the world in which we live in, that we are called to live for Christ in an anti-Christian world. It's easy to live for Jesus when everybody around you is living for Jesus, but, but when you have to live for Jesus all by yourself in a counter-Christian world that is uh, uh, oppositional to your convictions, now you will be subjected to persecution. And Paul here finds himself, though his ministry has been successful, churches have been planted, letters have been written that have been included in the biblical canon, he still finds himself in trouble for the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to aggravate your spirit and tell you, ladies and gentlemen, if you're not in trouble with God, you ought to be in trouble over God. 
And when you're really living for God, living for God doesn't always mean you're accepted. It could mean you are aggravating people around you who are anti-Christian. You are upsetting the cultural norm and accepting Jesus Christ not just personally but publicly. If you're not in trouble with God, you ought to be in trouble over God. At some point in your walk with God, God will call for you to take a stand for him that is uncomfortable for all of your relationships. Paul has made that declaration and it has landed him in jail. He is on this ship being ported and shipped to Rome. Uh, uh, Acts chapter 27 he is a member of a group of prisoners who are being shipped to Rome 275 other persons he makes 276 who are being shipped to Rome to stand in front of Caesar he gets a visitation from an angel of the Lord on that ship that tells them that they're going to experience storms they're going to be shipwrecked but nobody's life is going to be lost and by the time they have experienced this shipwreck at the close of chapter 27 the Bible says they land on this island called Melita it is an island in the Mediterranean Sea it is not colonized by Greek language because the text says they are barbarians it doesn't mean that they are savages it means in the Greek etymology of the passage that they do not speak the Greek language. And as a result, there is some uh, language barrier, some, some means of working against the connection that while they are view viewed as barbarians, the text says that when they landed on this island, the natives showed them no little kindness. In other words, they were extremely kind to these prisoners. They were so kind that in the course of the storm still happening, the text says it was cold and rainy that they built them a fire. And while they built them a fire, Paul is inspired to participate in the building of this fire. He reaches for some sticks to contribute to the fuel of the fire. And when he throws the sticks in the fire, the text says a snake reaches out, bites Paul on the hand. Text says it fastens on his hand, which is unusual behavior for a venomous snake because venomous snakes don't have a need to hold on to you. They just bite inveminate you and pull back but the text says that this venomous snake held on to Paul's hand this is this is an unusual attack this is this is not even common for snake behavior it, I would understand if this was a coiling snake who was not venomous but but killed by constriction that's not what the text says the text says this is a venomous snake who who fastens on to Paul's hand uh, the real the, the real translation means he just simply attacked Paul's hand and it was a venomous snake the natives are standing around they are waiting on him to swell up he didn't they're waiting on him to die he didn't they're waiting on him to fall out. He didn't. They're waiting on him to aspirate over this snake attack. He didn't. I thought I was already in your business, but I see you too cool to, to respond to the brother minister. So I'll shout myself because there are others in here who I'm a part of who have had attacks in your life and people were waiting on you to fall out, but you didn't. They were waiting on you to swell up but you did. They were waiting on you to develop a funky attitude, but you still walking around nice. You still got the joy of the Lord. You still shaking people's hands, walking around like ain't nothing ever happened to you. Am I the only person here who has had that experience that your snake bite went public? 
but there's no sign of you falling out from the attack that's been on your life. I knew I'm not by myself. You got folk waiting on you to die and you still here. You got people waiting on you to fall out and you still here. They waiting on you to pull your hair out and get stressed out and be sick in the hospital because they know your bite but they are confused by your rebound. Would you look at somebody and tell them the greatest clap back you can give somebody is to live past your bites. The greatest clap back you can give anybody is to be able to smile in their face when they know your bites. They were waiting on him to die. He didn't die. They were waiting on him to swell up. He, he didn't swell up. They were waiting on him to fall out. He didn't fall out. Text says they figured since he got bit but didn't die he must be a god they were close they're really saying that since you didn't fall out either you are a god or god got something to do with this matter as to why you didn't swell up fall out or die and when they figured out that there's something unique happening here another event interrupts their assessment the governor of the island whose name is Publius fell sick with both fever and a bloody flux and they brought him to Paul Paul laid hands on him the Bible says in verse 8 he healed this sick father of the governor whose name is Publius. That's the story. I want to back up and share some things with you out this text. I think are pertinent to our walk with God and we'll all go get some chicken together. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm trying to help you to understand something significant that leaps out at us at the onset of this little Easter speech. It's simply this. They land in Melita, but Melita was not the destination. The destination was to roam in front of Caesar. I'm going to try it again for these people right along here. They were on their way to Rome to stand in front of Caesar. And they ended up shipwrecked at Melita. I'll try one more time. They, they're on their way to Rome. They got to stand before Caesar. But they ended up shipwrecked at Melita. Well, here is the blessing about Melita. Melita is a prophesied stop. Because Acts chapter 27, verse 23 and 24 says that when the angel of the Lord visited Paul, it was prophesied that they must land on a certain island from the last chapter and the first verse of the next chapter says they are at that certain island I'll try it again it means ladies and gentlemen that this stop was not their destination it was confirmation that they were heading in the right direction now let me aggravate you and tell you it means that this stop was not the work of the devil. It was the will of God. And I need to tell some of you that you are stopped and you're not stopped because the devil stopped you. You are stopped because God stopped you and therefore you have to learn ladies and gentlemen that every stop isn't satanic sometimes God got to stop you to confirm that you on the right path sometimes God has to stop you because there's somebody else you got to bless on your way to your destination sometimes God got to stop you just to confirm you heading in the right direction still miss it so let me help you ladies and gentlemen whenever you're lost you're never lost according to your location 
you're always lost according to your destination. <laughs> Still missed it. Whenever you're lost, you know where you are. The problem is you don't know where you're going. And when you don't know where you're going, that's when you feel lost. You are sitting in this church right now. You are not lost. You know where you are. But whenever you say you lost, it's because you've lost sense of where you're going. And what do you do when you're lost? Stop and ask somebody where is such and such ladies and gentlemen every now and then you got to understand you are not lost God just stopped you because there's some people that you got to bless on the way to wherever you're going I don't know who I'm preaching to but God doesn't just order your steps he orders your stops The devil doesn't have you stopped, God does. I feel like I'm not making any progress. That's because God wants you stopped. That's because God stopped you because there is a purpose to where you are and you've got to get affirmed that you're on the right direction. This was on the right direction. Even though he was shipwrecked, watch this, he was shipwrecked, but he was still where God wanted him to be. I'm going to try it one more time. It means, y'all, since y'all acting funny, you are where God wants you to be and a storm got you there. You thought it was the work of the enemy. No, if sometimes trouble will get you where God wants you to be. Storms will break out in your life to move you exactly where God wants you to be. They're shipwrecked on this island and there are a bunch of prisoners, 276 in total. And the Bible says they land on Melita. The natives see them get, come on the island and out of hospitality, out of compassion, they don't even treat them as prisoners. They treat them as normal people and they made a fire, watch what the text says, in the present cold and in the present rain. I'm gonna try it one more time. They get on the island. The natives say we need to be hospitable to them. The Bible says they start to build a fire in the cold and in the present rain. I'm going to try one more time for these people right along here. Uh, they're in a rainstorm. They decide it's cold out here. Let me build a fire. And the text says they built a fire in the cold and in the rain. <coughs> I'll try it one more time. They're in a rainstorm. They decide it's cold out here. They decide let's build a fire in the cold and in the rain. It's cold outside. They decide we're going to build a fire in the cold and what the text says in the present rain. Now y'all got to help me. I'm a little retarded so you got to help me. I see how the fire is going to address the cold. But I'm struggling with how's fire going to work in rain. Still slow. If anything, the rain is going to put the fire out and it's going to make for wet wood. But Paul says, since y'all bold enough to try to build something in an atmosphere where it ain't going to work, I'm going to join the club and partner with people who know how, who are believing God to build something in an atmosphere that will destroy it. 
I know why your life is boring because you hooked up with people who ain't got no inspiration. I know why your life is boring because you hooked up with people who don't believe that they can do something in the wrong atmosphere. But I got to preach to somebody today and tell you in this next season you need to hook up with people who believe that you can do the impossible in the possible. Matthew chapter 19 verse 26 the disciples are having a discussion with Jesus about the probability of a rich man getting into the kingdom of God Jesus said in Matthew 19 and 26 with men this is impossible but with God all things are possible Mark chapter 9 verse 23 this father brought his demonic son to Jesus and the disciples are wondering how or why could we get this demon out of this boy. Jesus says in Mark chapter 9 verse 23, if you can believe, all things are possible to them that believe. Luke chapter 1 verse 37, it's a little teenage girl there who says she's been pregnant and the Holy Ghost is her baby daddy. And she goes and meets up with her cousin. And her cousin says to her, baby, don't worry about it. For with God, all things are possible. Paul says in Philippians chapter 4, verse 13, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Ladies and gentlemen, you ain't got time to wait for the atmosphere to get right. You ain't got time to wait for all the ducks to fall in place. You ain't got time to wait for always your money to be right. Sometimes you got to build even when it's the wrong time to build. And you got to link up with somebody who don't mind building a fire in the rain. Ask your neighbor, neighbor, what kind of faith walker are you? Are you one of the boat dwellers or the water walkers? Are you one of those people who need everything to be right before you move? Or are you going to build in the rain? Get me around somebody who don't mind building a fire in the rain. I'm glad y'all standing up because you probably about to sit down on this point. I need you to pay attention to me. This is going to bless your life. I got upset with this text because this text, Fred, introduced me to a building reality. Did y'all notice in the text that a snake didn't show up until you start building something. The snake's been on the island the whole time. But it wasn't until you started building something, now the snakes come up. Now, here comes the truth. Because when you're ready to start a ministry, here comes the snakes. When you're ready to start a business, here comes the snakes. When you're ready to start a red marriage, here comes the snakes. They don't show up until you start building something. As long as you ain't doing nothing, ain't no snakes around. But the minute you cast vision, the minute you do something unusual, here they come. Anybody ever experienced that? Everybody was cool with you when you were sitting at home doing absolutely nothing. But the minute you had the unmitigated goal to get up and do something that they didn't want to do. The minute you had the, 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 the boldness to get up and do what God called you to do. Here come the snakes. It gets worse. But then it gets worse. Because y'all, the snake had 
275 other options of who he could have been. But B.C., he bit the one God called. The other people was actually guilty. They were real criminals. But he bites Paul when Paul is the one God called. Paul is the one that's got an assignment on his life. Paul is the one the angel visited. Why you bite him when you had other options of real criminals to bite? Can I tell you why? Because dogs don't bark at parked cars. You ain't never walked your dog before? When your dog walks past a moving, a, a steel car, they ain't saying nothing. But the minute a car come past making noise, they barking. That's why they attacking you, because you on the move. That's why they attacking you, because you making noise. You the one moving. Ladies and gentlemen, I thought I was in football country. The person you always get hit is the one with the ball. And maybe the attack is on you because you the one got the ball. You the one got the power to score. You the one on the move. They don't bother people who ain't on the move. See, by the Holy Ghost, I'm going to pull some of y'all into your destiny today because you have allowed insignificant people to keep you scared into what God has put in your life and you won't even let, you won't hear God, you'll let people who don't even like you, who don't even care for you, who don't even value you to stop you from doing what God has put in your spirit. The devil is a lie. Deal with the fact that when you start moving, I can't get no help here. Deal with the fact that when you start making noise, you're the one that's gonna be on the attack. But since you acting still slow, I'm gonna tell you why they're really attacking you. Y'all got a Bible? Y'all got a Bible? Here's what the Bible is. I, I, I don't need the Bible because I've been looking at it all week. Y'all don't read the Bible, so you gotta read it today. Come here. I found out why the snake really bit him. The snake bit him because he was building something that was going to kill the snake. Because when he shook the snake off, he shook the snake off in the fire. And therefore the fire was going to kill the snake. So the snake is trying to kill him. Before what he builds kill the snake. Ladies and gentlemen, that's why the enemy trying to take you out. Because what you're doing for God is getting ready to take the enemy out. I need you to encourage your neighbor. And tell him, neighbor, every weapon. Nope, they didn't get happy. Look at the next person. Tell them, neighbor, every weapon formed against you is not going to prosper because the assignment God got on your life is meant to take the enemy out before he takes you out. You can't stand me because what I'm building is going to take you out. And instead of you partnering with me, you want to fight me. When the truth is we can build together. Have I got any help here? Uh, Dixon, here's the other reason why he got a snake bite. 
Tell your neighbor, neighbor, don't talk to me right now. This is my point right here. The other reason why Paul got his hand bitten is because Lauren snake bites expose what's really in the heart of people connected to you. If you got a Bible, look at it now. I ain't got no cliches. Get your Bible. Y'all got a Bible? Verse 2 says, the natives were compassionate and built them a fire. He gets bit in verse 3 and 4. Verse 4 says, the natives start judging him saying, he must really be a murderer. Y'all so slow. Verse 2 says, they're compassionate to him to build him a fire. He gets bit by a snake. Verse 4 says, they said among themselves, you know he killed somebody. Now my question is, since we just met, when did that come in your heart? I just got to the island. We don't even know each other. And you calling me a murderer. Ladies and gentlemen, the snake bites in your life will cause people to change towards you or it'll reveal what they always felt. Preach soul and Morgan. What it look like I'm doing. If you really want to know how folk feel about you, get trouble in your life and the real truth will come out. Because they'll shift from compassion to criticism. They'll shift from kindness to being judgmental. Maybe y'all ain't, see, see I, I, I know some of y'all like to stay in the safety zone and you don't want to do what's the purpose of God in your life because you value your friendships over God's purpose. But the truth of the matter is you start to see how folk really feel about you when crisis hits your life. Look at it, look at it, look at it. They put a theology to it. They said, no, he, he must have done killed somebody. You don't even know me, but you judging me. Can y'all help me post this? I need you to tell your neighbor, tell them, neighbor, don't judge me by what I've been through. Because what I've been through is not an accurate assessment of who I am. They got a theology to his bite. He's a murderer, so fate has caught up with him. And what is happening to him, he deserves. Thank you for creating an expectation that I'm about to outlive. Because you think I deserve this bite and you're waiting on me to die. But the text says there was no swelling, there was no harm, there was no death, and he shook it off. Okay, look at your neighbor. Tell your neighbor, I need some shake room because I'm getting ready to shake off some stuff that's been said about me for years. And what y'all missed is if I got bitten and I still got my shake that means the bite didn't take my strength do I got anybody in here that I just let the enemy know after all the bites I've been through I still got my strength I still got my voice I still got my mind I still can stand on my feet anybody got the strength of God in your life You ain't got it yet. Let me see if I can talk to some real people. Every lie been told on you. Every scheme set up on you. Every heartbreak you had. Shake it off. Anybody in here ready to take a moment and declare your victory? I'm going to shake it off. 
Show somebody you're still strong. Just, just shake it off. Show somebody you still got joy. Just shake it off. Show the enemy the weapon you did didn't work. Just shake it off. Show the devil you've been through divorce, but you're still happy. Just shake it off. Show the enemy you thought you was going to kill me with sickness, but I'm still here. Shake it off. Your shake is a sign that you still got strength. Because the joy of the Lord is your strength. Anybody got strength in here today? Your real victory is in your power that still lies within you. Wait a minute. I ain't done. We read down through verse 8. So I got to tell you what's, what's so significant about that. He shook off the beast. They said there's something divine about this guy. Because typically we've seen other people get bit. And they didn't make it. Y'all don't know when to get happy. If you really want to get happy, ladies and gentlemen, consider the fact that there's some other people who've been through what you've been through. And the results were different. Lord have mercy to take you. There's some other people who didn't survive what you survived. And the results were different. It's not because you're any special than anybody else. God just wasn't done with you. Look at somebody and tell them, neighbor, it's not that I pray anymore. It's not that I'm it's more, more spiritual. It's just the truth of the matter. God just wasn't done with me yet. Shakes it off. And another story pops up, mama. The other story was the father of the island governor got sick. And when I read the Bible, Jordan, he not only has one sickness, he got two. Y'all got the Bible? You can read it, can't you? The text says he got the fever and a bloody flux. I didn't make that up, it's in the Bible. He's struggling with two sicknesses at one time. The Bible says that they brought him to Paul. Paul laid his hands on him and healed him. I'm gonna deliver y'all from slow if it's the last thing I do. The daddy got fever and flux. They brought the daddy to Paul. Paul laid hands on him and healed him. I don't know why y'all making this so difficult. They brought the daddy to Paul. Paul laid hands on him and healed him. Why are y'all making my sermon so long? The same hand that got hurt is the same hand that did the healing. The same hand that got bit is the same hand that can do the blessing. Can I shout somebody and tell you, God is going to use you after your hurt. God's going to bless you after you've been hurt. Because the same hand that got bit is the same hand that can bless. Since y'all slow, this text proves, Carol Watson, this text proves that healing can come from wounded hands. Does that sound like somebody y'all know? He was wounded for my transgressions, bruised for my iniquities. The chastisement of my peace is upon him and by his stripes we are healed.
Good night, church. May the Lord God bless you real good. Just look at somebody. Don't touch them. Just look at them and tell them, neighbor, God is still going to use you. No, they didn't get happy. Look at the next person and tell them, neighbor, I don't care where you've been bitten at. God can still use you. Look at him and tell him, neighbor, you ain't get, you thought this was the end. Now he going to raise you up because even after you've been hurt, God can still use you. I'm done. Thank y'all for coming here. Uh, I'm done. Harold, this is going to bless your life. Here's what I'm struggling with in the text. What I'm struggling with is that you got a Bible and can read it. Uh, uh, there is no divine utterance in this context. There is no, and the Lord said. There is no, and the Spirit of the Lord spoke. There's no word or action from verse 1 to verse 8 by God, period. So my problem, Harold, is that I'm struggling to classify this as a miracle. I don't know if we can safely put this in miracle category. Because God never did or said anything in these eight verses. Ain't no and the Spirit said. Ain't no and Jesus spoke. It's none of that. So I'm going to be on the safe side and tell y'all that, that Paul surviving this snake bite was not by God's power. Good night. May the Lord God bless you real good. Paul surviving this snake bite was by God's promise. Night, night, Lena. This is going to bless you. Because I told you in chapter 27 that you got to stand before Caesar. And therefore, nothing is going to kill you because my promise got there first. Y'all ain't happy, so I'll shout myself. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to suggest to you that the reason why you really here is because you've been vaccinated by God's promise. Do I got anybody here that will testify that the real truth, yeah, I've been vaccinated, but the truth of the matter is God's promise is on me. And because God's promise is on me, nothing's going to happen to me until God's promise is fulfilled in my life I need you to holler at your neighbor and tell him neighbor I'm not venom proof I'm venom resistant maybe y'all don't know the difference venom proof means no venom can get in you but venom resistant means when it does get in you I can't get no help here. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, I'm venom resistant because when the enemy rises up like a flood, I just shake it off. Anybody glad you got venom power tonight? Well, just look at somebody and tell them, neighbor, if you got venom power, open your mouth and holler like you got venom power. The good news is promise is on you. And because promise is on you. Yeah, yeah. I said, and because promise is on you. You can make it to where God would have you to be. And I'm getting this witness in this police. Would you look at your neighbor and tell him, neighbor, I've had some stuff on the inside that should have killed me already. But I'm still I'm still here by the promise of God. Yeah, in the bond here, great 
full that God has kept you. Y'all ain't talking back to me. Let me talk to the balcony and ask you, are you glad that you've been bitten but you're still here? Have I got a witness here? Can I tell you why you still here? Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone. But by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God, tell somebody his word is on me. Have I got a witness here? Look at somebody and tell them, neighbor, his word is on me. And I'm going to live until his word gets fulfilled in my life. Y'all still sleep. The Bible says that he got bit and the venom was in him but it did not kill him because God's promise was on his life and the good news is Paul said in 2nd Corinthians chapter 1 verse 20 that all the promises of God are yea and amen now I need y'all to do me a favor I need y'all to do me a favor look at your name neighbor right next to you because they may know some of your business but I need you to take the next 10 seconds to show them that you still got your shake take the next 10 seconds to show them that you're still here after all that you You've been through, you still got your job. Anybody here grateful that you still got your job? If you still got it, open your mouth and give God a praise. Yeah, anybody glad that you still got your job? Tell your neighbor. Got victory because I can still shake it off. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, I got joy because I can still shake it off. That's what happened one Friday on Calvary's Hill. They bit my Jesus, but Sunday morning. Yeah. He shook it off and stood on resurrection ground declaring I got all power in my hand now let everything that can shake it off open your mouth and give him glory
Do I got any survivors here? Do I got any survivors here? Tell your name, excuse me, while I give it glory.
I want to hear the saints open your mouth all over this building. Come on, saints, open your mouth all over this building. Come on. Don't you let that mask muzzle your mouth. God's been too good to you. He let you survive too many bites. Come on, open your mouth and worship him, everybody. Come on, you can't do this tomorrow at work, they'll fire you. Come on, come on, open your mouth now. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. I said where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. I want to hear what victory sounds like to you. Everybody in this room that know you got victory, I want to hear what victory sounds like to you. I want to hear what victory sounds like to you. I know it ain't silent. Somebody ought to thank God that promise got there before your problem did. Promise got there before your problem did. I promise you I feel healing in the room right now. I promise you I feel healing in the room right now. Would you just take another few seconds just to get lost in the Lord? Come on, close your eyes, lift your hands, bow at your seat, whatever you need to do. Your breakthrough is right here. It's in the presence of God. His anointing is in the room to remove burdens and destroy yokes. Come on. Come on. Survival is not silent. I said survival is not silent. Survival is not silent. You've been through some stuff you ain't talked about yet. God done brought some of y'all through some stuff you ain't even talked to nobody about yet. Because you was too ashamed. But if you be ashamed to own me before God, before men, he'll be ashamed to own you before his father. So I want to talk to that spirit in you that says I'm free from the stuff I ain't even talked about yet. Your freedom is here. Your healing is here. Somebody online, you're experiencing the power of God right where you are. Healing comes with his presence. Joy comes with his presence. Peace comes with his presence. This is your time. Receive the joy of the Lord. Receive the healing of our living Christ. In this room, your healing is here. You have survived, not because you didn't get bitten, but, be, but because promise is on you. You didn't survive just because you've been avoiding trouble. You survived because promise is on you. Where you are is not your destination. It's only your confirmation that you're on the right path.
Aleluia. Aleluia. Sweet anointing, sweet anointing, sweet anointing, sweet anointing. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Holy Spirit, kiss us now. Yes, Lord. Holy Spirit, fill us now. Would you lift your hands and just receive this glory? There's a wind of peace coming in this house. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. All we ultimately wanted was your presence, God. What we ultimately wanted was your presence, God. We don't want to be in church and not feel the presence of the Holy Ghost.